So we're talking about how to measure a violin size. I think one of the things that I've noticed is that, bless you, thank you. Uh, I think it's easy for us to exaggerate in our minds the amount of variation there is within the average bunch of kids. People will say things like, "You can't put a size, you can't put an age to a size because all the kids are different." But if you go to a school and you look at the year threes. You know, the tallest one might be this much taller, but they're not this much taller. So I think I'm going to give you my general guide according to age, um, but also talk about how we can make sure that we are giving them the right size um, if they are kind of unusual. So, um, in my experience, if you're going to teach three-year-olds, unless they're big three-year-olds, nearly four-year-olds, and obviously, sorry, not obviously, the younger the children, the more variation there is within one age. Because when you've just turned three, you are, you know, a third younger than when you're about to turn four. Whereas when you're eight, it's an eighth younger. Does that make sense? So a small three-year-old, Dr. Suzuki used to say that the three and a half year olds were the perfect age to start. We've talked a little bit, and I'll remind you that I don't think that's really what works in this country generally because they don't have the same relationship to authority. They generally have parents who are both working at least a bit and sometimes full time. They, if they do go to daycare and stuff, it's very much care for the child rather than any kind of learning how to take instruction. And the biggest problem for the three and a half year olds is not that they won't take instruction from you, but they won't take instruction from their parents once they get home. And therefore the practice doesn't happen. The lessons might be lovely, but if the practice isn't happening, eventually everyone will get um, fed up and then falls apart. I think it's much better to make them wait until they're four. It does depend whether they've done, for example, early music education, early childhood education, uh, whether you've got experience with really young children, uh, what kind of parent, how much parent education you can do, how committed they are, you know, you might say to one parent, look, if you want to start your three-year-old, I could guarantee that they'd pretty much be playing the same thing when they're five as they will if you start them when they're four, but there might be less tangible benefits to them having started earlier that we'll never be able to measure, but I think would be really great. So do you want to wait a year or do you want to start now? Some parents will be like, <laughs> thanks, you're all right, I'll wait a year. And then other parents will be like, no, I really want to get started, even if it's so slow that by the time they're five and a half, they'll be in the same place. So I think it's things like that, you know, that kind of make it, um, make, oh, can make the exceptions work. Um, so generally, I would say that three and a half year olds, unless they're very big, need a first, second size. And mostly by the time they're four, four and a quarter. We need a what size? Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Okay. It's not a thirty tooth. Thirty seconds. 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 Thirty Maybe, maybe I will one day. We'll see. Um, we want you, I think. Yeah, exactly. And um, you know, uh, and I think if they're that tiny, maybe there is a good argument to be made for a cardboard violin. I don't use them generally because I think if the child is old enough to take instruction and practice at home, they're old enough to learn pretty much straight away how to look after the violin. And also, because violins are worth a hundred quid if they drop them on the floor, you know, it's not a disaster. It's not. It's not quid. Like, well, in, uh, presuming that they're insured and most of them are renting from me at that stage, you know. Um, it's not a disaster for mankind, for humankind, if that violin is broken. And most of them, you just pop the bridge back in, they're fine. Anyway, so, uh, as a very rough guide, a 30 second size for a three and a half to a four, four year old, by the time they're sort of turned four, not just yesterday, they will mostly need a 16th. As they're approaching five years old, or once they're five, they'll need a tenth. The tenth sizes tend to work for five and six year olds. And sometime during when they're six, they will go on to an eighth size. You 
know, depending on whether they hit a massive growth spell or not. I would try and keep them on the eighth size until eight or perhaps nine. Quarter size is a lot bigger than an eighth size. Most eight-year-olds, I would say, are ready for a quarter size. And then a half size is a big jump. So I tend to think of putting kids on a half size not before um, year four, which is the year they turn nine. So most of them will be nine by the time they go on to half size, or even ten. And I think around the time that they go on to a half size violin, we're starting to think about the physical stature of the child as well as their height and how long their arms are. If you have a very, very waif-like little tiny person who doesn't have very much muscle mass, they, you're going to want to put them onto a half size later on than if you have a big, burly, kind of muscular... You know those kids that you look at and you're like, oh, you do a lot of swimming. Whether they do or not, that, that kind of body, like mine, basically. And then those t tiny little, like, can barely lift their own arm. <laughs> no, not like you. But you know the ones where you look at their legs and you're like, wow, where are the muscles? Like, how do you stand up? <laughs> you know, those are the kids that are going to want a lighter volume because it is a big... Um, difference in weight as well as in length. So it's not just where the hand goes to, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, I don't think I've ever put a child on a three quarter size who's not already in year six, or the age that they would be in year six, so 10 turning 11. I think lots of people, they get into the habit, lots of teachers get into the habit of changing violins quite often. So there's a subconscious feeling like, oh, you haven't had a violin for a, a new violin for ages, so we better put you on a three quarter. And then suddenly the three quarter looks like a massive viola on them. But the other thing to be careful with, with giving kids new sizes is very difficult to go back. They feel really upset if you say to them, I think you're ready for this violin, and then I come up to you and say in the corridor, I'm really sorry, I think that violin's too big for them. It's very hard, that's why I very rarely have said that, even though I see it quite a lot. Um, I don't see it quite a lot from anyone in this room. But, uh, you know, it's very difficult to row back because they feel really frustrated. They're so excited about getting a new violin. Uh, I can only think of two times in my career where I've done it and it was really difficult. I really regretted having miscalculated it in the first place. Um, so be careful with that. But definitely three quarter size for 10 turning 11 and right through for most kids. And again, puberty hits at different ages and there is a big difference in kind of average 12 year olds. Like if you think about Lila, is 12. P. Lila's 12 and a half. And Tilly's 14 and a half, two whole years older than her, and when you stand them next to each other, well, the height is not that different. Lila's almost as tall as Tilly. The physicality is very different. But, you know, like, so basically that age, like, when you want to put them onto a full size can happen at very different times. But generally, I tend to think of them having turned 13 before they're going to go onto a full size. Sometimes I use a seven eight, especially if they're playing really well, they're frustrated by the sound they're getting from a three quarter size, and they desperately want, for example, if they have an older sibling who's on a full size, they desperately want a full size. A seven eight can be a really good in between. If you can find it. Yeah. They are quite difficult to get, and I would recommend that they rent rather than buy because um, they're not going to be on them for very long. Um, and then full size, kind of, I think, you know, at the other end of the spectrum, we have had some students who are very small, like Neve, Neve and Tilly are the same age. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And Neve is really small, sorry, you don't know these kids. But Neve is really small and Tilly's really tall. But Neve is on a three quarter at the moment. Yeah. But she's 14 and a half. I think there has to be a point where you're like, okay, we just have to put you on full size. Unless you've got like a growth issue, yeah. you know. Because they've been probably designed for men, right? Given, um, probably, yes. Yeah. Because yeah, so I mean, if you look at a six foot three guy who's got arms like, you know, mm -hmm. and then they play the full size violin. And I'm yeah, it's the equivalent of the three quarters. Like, I don't think you need to be full size if you do uh, an adult. Like, um, yeah. Evie's mum was going to be violin, that's not full size, and it suits her just fine. Yeah, but if you're thinking about the quality of 
instruments. If you've got loads of money, you can buy a really good three-quarter size. If you've got an average amount of money, it's very difficult to get a three-quarter size that's good enough. And also, when you think about the social aspect of it, most of these kids are in orchestras at school, and there does come a point where people are like, why are you still on a three-quarter size? Mm. And it, they do generally just sound better. Like, if you've got the same amount of money for a three-quarter and a full size, the full size will sound better. If you've got loads and loads and loads and loads of money, then, you know, you could buy a really outstanding three-quarter size. But um, I think for most kids... And also, I think, you know, once they're fully grown, or at least big enough, you're not going to damage their body by being, you know, like Kate wouldn't be damaged by being on a full size. It wouldn't hurt her shoulders. It's, you know, like if kids can play viola, but like adults, if humans can play viola, they can play a full size violin even if they're a foot shorter than mm -hmm. the guy next to the middle. Yeah, but, um, I had a student who was 10, 11, I put them on full size. Yeah. That's what I mean. It does. There are always exceptions, yeah. but generally, that's my kind of rule of thumb. In terms of actually measuring a student, I think the things that you want to think about are when they're playing in first position, you want a good angle there. Like if it's like this, that's not going to be useful for them, comfortable for them. They can't support it properly, and it's about having the relaxation in the shoulder that if you feel here you could hold something there quite a long time if you think here you wouldn't be able to hold it there for very long at all you know you can go to gyms and they'll just make you stand like this for hours and that's enough you don't even have to have a weight to make it really hot after a little while whereas here you can do that all day basically so it's about the muscles being sort of in a midpoint would it be a three would it be a right angle i guess it's near the right angle yeah, yeah pretty much you want the one and the four to be able to be in the octave frame pretty easily. If their four is really, really, really stretching like that, that might be worth two things. It might be worth having a smaller violin for a bit longer, but it also might be that you need to pull back, find the four and pull back to the one. This is how we teach tenths, which is not in level two or three. If you're going to play a tenth like that, if you start in first position and see how far you can go up, if you can I can barely reach a ninth. Whereas if you're coming down, so you've got the four coming in place and you're extending back. So it's about the, the angle of the first finger is the one you can change. Whereas the fourth finger you can't, like, you can't use this part of your fourth finger to play that top note. Whereas you can use this side of your first finger. And the opening is easier. So make sure if you're thinking, oh no, they can't reach it, it may be because the hand is too far away, it might be because, you know, just to try from the one back and see how that feels. Mm -hmm. So it might be a technical issue. It may also be that they have very short stubby fingers. Um, but, you know, if the whole of the Southeast Asian and South Asian continent can play on full-size violins, there aren't very many people in this country who say, who, who, could, who could actually justify saying, I can't play octaves because my fingers are too short. Like, there's a whole continent of superstars over there who managed to do it. So there's obviously a way, right? Um, so that's like pretty much a right angle, the, thing, the, the octave frame in the left hand, and whether they can comfortably get to the two. Quite often, when I'm changing a kid up, we will put a note on, a, a sticker on the bow because they won't go to the tip. Partly because they're not used to it, and partly because this side might be more able to go up half a centimetre before this side is able to add four. So that's completely fine, just put like a fake tip on and just say, we're just going to move this up as you grow. Um, and the way that I go from the smaller violins to see if they're ready before I'll even, like I'll just say, can we just measure you? Oh yeah, it's fine. Is whether the second finger, and I can't do it obviously because the violin is the right size for me, can go all the way in there and you've still got a relaxed shape, a, an open V shape in the arm. If the finger is going in like this, that's, they're not ready to go up. If the finger, like for mine, I would have to really straighten my arm to get it right into that gap there, that means I'm not ready for the next size up. Um, but if it's going in and they're still got quite a relaxed elbow, then I would say, okay, let's go and try the next one and up and you get it out and you measure what they're like at the tip, what, what it looks like here, what the elbow angle is. 
And also, whether they're like, oh my god, it's really heavy, I don't like it. I think that the psychological side of it is really important. If they're excited to go onto a big violin, brilliant. If they're nervous about it or they you put it under their chin and they're like, no, 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 I don't like it, then you say, okay, fine, let's wait half a turn. Six weeks is not going to make any difference to their development as a musician, but a psychological gap of like block rather of, I don't want to play this instrument, it's too hard, it's too big for me, it's too heavy, will make a difference. The last set of things I want to talk about is often I've seen people put kids up a size on violin and when I measure them I think, no, that's, that they don't need that bigger size. And when I talk to the teacher they say they're doing the same things as I've just recommended. So the bow is fairly kind of clear if you're putting them on at the tip and you're not making sure they've got it straight then you can misjudge it. But what often happens here is that teachers start saying that their students are looking looking. Um, squashed in the violin because the violins come forward and they're not really noticing what's happening here and therefore the violin looks it all looks too crunched up and they can often if they've got a waterfall problem they look like and it's easy for a teacher to think oh what they need is everything opening up it is what they need but it's not by putting a bigger violin there because all of those same problems are just going to be exacerbated by having a bigger instrument so walk behind them, see what's happening here. Good rule of thumb is the back of the shoulder rest in line with the, where would be the um, seam on a shirt. Um, that this all looks comfortable, that they're not doing this. You know, this can make the instrument look really too small. And it's all in my own body. Um, and that the left hand is well set up. All right? Great. Good. <laughs> okay. Uh, any questions? I mean, I've got a couple of the other week. I, I know one of my students is like, I need to do something about her setup. I'm not quite sure where to go with it. Okay, um, let's stop this and then we can yeah. talk about that for a minute. Bye, everyone. Bye.